Andre La Rosa is a legend in the calisthenics culture. His breathtaking bodyweight strength and muscular physique are a desirable combo. Discover the method and mindset you should learn to master calisthenics. What is the story of Andre La Rosa? The story of an average guy who fell in love with the training, with the bodyweight training. I saw some videos on the internet of muscular guys training at the parks. So I've decided to start to give it a try. But it was fun. Like I started doing with air squats, um, half pull-ups, chin-ups. And, and then I never stopped. Day after day, almost 10 years are, are already been passed. What type of cow snacks did you enjoy the most? I started with basics sets and reps that's what i still like to do what i still like to train almost every day because it's easy it's fun and it gives a nice feedback to the body uh, the body responds in a good way also aesthetically it's good this is probably my favorite style of calisthenics but i also like to to see where my limit is to, to see what I'm capable of with this body. When I die, uh, I wanna say to myself a few seconds before dying that I was able to push myself to the limit and see what this body was able to do. So this is why I started doing skills. Um, but the most fun sets and reps for me. What are the hardest body weight exercises or strength skills that you can do? Probably one of the most difficult ones is the two fingers planche push up. I haven't done it uh, for a while, like a few years, because it's painful for the fingers and also it need to be conditioned. You know, you need to train your fingers to support all the weight of your body. Also, um, I feel like one arm planche push-ups or at least alpha push-ups with the one arm planche position. It's one of the hardest one because it requires a lot of balance, a lot of strength and flexibility too, because you need to bend a little bit your body to the side of the arm on the ground. And it put a lot of stress on your wrist, on your shoulder. Why don't you do workout competitions versus just training to compete against yourself? I was satisfied with my competitions, at least for the um, freestyle competitions. And that wasn't fun anymore for me. I didn't find a meaning to the competition. It was pretty boring. So I started to focus on myself and focus on my personal achievements, my personal goals. And that was the right thing to do because it made me able to focus on my job, like YouTube videos, Instagram videos, workout programs, sponsorships, 100% of effort to my job and trainings, focusing on myself, on my real goals. Because this is what it's all about. You can maybe win competitions, but if you're not satisfied with your personal goals, with your real goals, it's useless. Given you've been doing calisthenics for more than 10 years, I feel you have so much to teach beyond just competing and showing your strength. I think you teaching and providing the motivation through your tutorials and your own training, I think you're having a bigger impact yeah i do appreciate it because uh, this is very important to me i this is what i try to do this is what i try to share to the world the passion i have for this type of training and showing a little bit of my knowledge online because when you share something to the um, people people will remember a little bit of you but if you only do competitions I don't think many people will remember you in a few years because competitions is like an, um, something that came from the ego, from your ego. You want to show the world, you want to show that uh, you can beat others or something similar. But when you share your knowledge or maybe your passion to the world without the ego, you can leave a little bit of yourself inside the mind and the heart of your 
support us. How has your mindset changed since you first started training as a child, a kid, teenager, to being an adult now? I'm very, I'm very proud of this, of this change of my mindset. By training, I was able to understand, the, to understand myself for real. If you put in the effort and the patience, um, you can change your life. When I finished my school, like my studying, I didn't have any passion or anything. Uh, I didn't have a specific goal, especially for a specific job. I kept training because that was the only thing I enjoyed. All I was doing was sleep, eat and go to the park for training and then casually it became my my job because I then uh, studied to become a teacher to become a, a coach I think it's very important especially for men to have as you said a purpose and a passion to help guide them yeah. in life because there's so many paths you can take that aren't so good with going into the wrong type of friends the wrong crowd doing uh, bad behaviors, it can really harm your life. And having this job and purpose and passion really does help you contribute to the lives of others, improve yourself, and just leave the world a better place. Yeah, when, when you have a purpose, like you said, you are able to take by your hands the life, your life, but you can change it how you want it how, how do you like it what is the biggest problem that you see with calisthenics on social media i try to not follow too much social medias i try to focus on myself and this is the most important thing there are two problems the first one is that people just want to show off at least with calisthenics and i think their final goal is to get a lot of views and then money it's a good motivation for them, but that's not going to last in the long run, especially when you have a lot of problems. The other problem with social media, uh, you can show the world whatever you want, and, and that is not probably the truth, the real truth. So we must be able to understand that what we see just a little part of their life, of our life. Many people listening are intermediate level of strength, wanting to become advanced. What advice do you have for these people? Uh, have passion. Um, master the basic first, because when you master the basic, you are able to then decide what to do with uh, your specific type of strength. When you're able to do like pull-ups, muscle-ups, sleeps, and all this stuff, then you can decide how to change your type of work. If you want to go to the end run style of work, then you can keep going with these basics. Or if you want to go to the um, skill type of work, if you want to go to the skill uh, style of training, you need a lot of patience because it's very dangerous, is maybe not healthy in the long run, especially for the body. Um, I compare myself to a lot of high-level gymnasts specialized in, on rings. And uh, I've had the opportunity to meet some Italians, some very elite level Italian gymnasts, and they all have some sort of uh, injury, especially on the shoulders, or they had like um, an oper operations. Let's be honest about, this is not something like, uh natural for the body to to go against the gravity with this type of levers it's a little bit stressful so you have to do it step by step and you don't need to rush the process this is important you need to understand when take a, a few days of rest when to do just some stretching when you need to focus more on the mobility exercises or when you are super healthy and you can push to the limit while working out. This is the most important thing to do, to understand your body, to stay in contact with yourself and feel how is your elbows, how is your maybe your shoulder, your bicep, your tricep, your forearm. Um, 
is this today a good day to train plunge or maybe I'm a little bit sore from the previous train. If I'm too sore, maybe I should change the workout routine. Maybe I should focus on another type of training, another exercise, another skill. Very good advice there. With the basic exercises, can you give some outline, maybe some sets and reps that people should have before they can confidently start these advanced moves and be strong? and minimize their injury. Very high level of basics. At least 40 push-ups, at least with perfect form. At least 20 pull-ups with perfect form. At least 30 dips. This is what I feel is the best ratio of, um, of the basic. Then from there, you can decide if you wanna improve the repetitions because 20 pull-ups is almost endurance already, uh, but no real endurance. But if you're able to do 20 pull-ups, you have the basic strength to then decide to move to towards the, um, the weighted calisthenics or towards the skills calisthenics elements or towards the endurance. It depends on the goal that someone wants with weighted calisthenics, but how do people know if they're doing the right amount of weight and sets and reps how do they decide well it depends by their maximum effort during one set but yeah if we are talking about basics um what i suggest to people is to take a, a few days of rest rest properly maybe not completely but recover and once you have recovered like 90 percent or you feel almost 100 percent healthy you can uh, do a, a session only with one or two exercises to the maximum so you you will go to your session you will warm up you will do a little bit of mobility a little bit of activation a few reps of uh, uh, basics and when you feel really at your peak one set to the maximum if we are talking about push-ups and then pull-ups or then rest a few days and after three, four days, you can try other basic. The important thing is to not do them when you are tired or when you feel like you have some sort of problems, a little bit of pain, when you don't feel 100% healthy. Once someone understands their maximum, either repetitions or weight lifted with weighted calisthenics, how about regular training? Because some people say, just train to failure. And then other people say, leave some reps and leave some intensity. What is, what is a good way for regular training weighted calisthenics? As a teacher, as a coach, the best way is to always have a buffer program every training, every week and every month. And then you have to adapt the workout to how you feel during the day. So you need to have a program, but also you need to be flexible and to know when to push and when to rest. Because if the program is already good for you and you feel during the session that you're making the right amount of effort, then it's okay. But if you feel like one day you're, you feel super good and you feel like you can push a little bit more, then you can do it. Or maybe if one day you can uh, um, have a little bit of pain on your shoulder, on your bicep, then you must be able to adapt your training. So you must be able to change a few exercises with other ones. For regular training, weighted calisthenics, you're looking for performance progress over time. And I think if people just try failure, 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 they're not going to be able to keep progress long term. In the long run, it's not the best thing to do. It's very dangerous and it's very stressful. I like to push myself during trainings, but every once in a while. And sometimes I do push myself more on a, a mental side than on a physical side. Yes. And by mental side is maybe do a lot of repetitions with low rest or maybe challenge yourself during 
the workout with something new, with something special, with something that push you out of your comfort zone, but always in a safe way. Because when you don't do it in a safe way, like I did in December, then you can tore up back, tore up. <laughs> can you tell the injury story, how you got injured? It's a pretty funny story because I have the experience and I know what I was doing. And I, just, I was doing crazy calisthenic skills, Maltese, planches and everything. And it was very good. The feeling was very good. Uh, and I didn't train some of these skills for a long time. But that day I was feeling good. I was uh, very relaxed. And I was training with a friend of mine. And after we finished our training, and he said to me, why don't we do some bench press? Oh, no. And, Not the bench press. And I've yeah. I've decided to, to give it a go because I don't usually train with weights especially bench press because uh, it's not useful uh, for my objective but i've decided to give it a try we did five sets of bench press and every set we increased the weight 110 kilograms a little more and um, while i was doing my four rep my fourth repetition during the, um, the set i was going super explosive because i, I was feeling very good but during the, um, the eccentric part, my left arm did this type of movement a little bit, and then I tore my pectoral. But I must say that I didn't want to do like strength training on bench press because I told to my friend, I never do this type of stuff, so yes, I'm probably yes. not uh, ready. And uh, he was like, no, don't worry. You can see you have the strength, uh, it's easy for you. And then I was motivated because uh, he, he told me a positive thing and I was feeling good. So I give it a try, give it a go, increase the weight. But the funny thing, you know what it was, that I didn't know that it was a, a serious injury and I kept training. Oh, no. So after this set, uh, we decided to, to keep going with um, a chest press machine. <laughs> so we kept going <laughs> and that was crazy. But then when I went home and I cooled down, I started to feel a lot of pain. And the next day I went for a scan and we find out that I tore my pectoral, my pectoral is uh, like three centimeters, not much, something like this. But I'm lucky because the doctor said I have a pretty good muscle and um, the tore happened in the deep down on, of the chest, not on the outside. So visi visibly, no, there is nothing you can see the tore. Yeah, but I had to, to, to stop training for some time, for, for a few weeks actually. The, um, the goal was to, to stop one or two months and then start again but after five days i've decided to um, to start with cardio with cardio and um, i don't know how to call it electro stimulators yes a stem yeah yeah i had an electro stimulators so i started with the electro stimulators once or twice a day to make some blood flow and to help recover the the chest and it was pretty good actually um, I feel like it never happened to me already. The only problem is that I feel a little bit of um, asymmetry during my my workouts. So sometimes I have problems with pull-ups, with push-ups. Sometimes my shoulder blade uh, is not in the right position. Maybe it's a little bit of fear. Maybe it's a little bit of um, of everything, other stuff. I don't know. But I feel good, actually. It's like, if you don't focus on the bad stuff, yeah. you can focus on other things. And you can make um, yourself like it never happened. Or at least, 
make yourself believe <laughs> it never happened. Today's sponsor for the show is Fitness FAQs. Use the coupon code PODCAST10 to save 10% at checkout when shopping on fitnessfaqs.com. Enjoy the discount and let's get back to the conversation. A major lesson that I learned from that, Andre, is that rule of progressing things patiently. Even though you're a strong guy, you've got a lot of muscle mass, it's a new exercise and you almost have to treat that like a beginner again. Everyone needs to think like this and listen to the body. Yeah, I do agree because, you know, when you train, you train on a specific way and your body is conditioned to that specific movement with that specific angle of work, with that specific degree. And the bench press in my, in my case, it wasn't the other degree that I do train because when you do push-ups, you train like this, but you never go with your elbows a little bit on the outside. And especially with all the weight on the chest, when you do push-ups, you, you have your feet on the ground, or when you do plunge push-ups, you don't have your feet on the ground, but you lean more forward. So you have more stretch, more stress on the shoulders and less on the chest. So. Even if you have the strength, if your body is not conditioned for that specific movement, it can be dangerous. But yeah, this is important because everyone can make mistakes, especially if you, if you don't stay on your program and if you do something extra. But I learned my lesson and um, actually I, I'm grateful it happened because uh, I feel like I'm stronger now mentally. I feel like... Um, that was a serious injury, but not too, too serious because my, te my tendon wasn't ripped. My tendon was fine. My muscle was almost completely tore off, like 50%. Uh, but not, nothing too serious. Like in a few weeks, you can, you can recover. And I had the opportunity to afford different physiotherapies uh, i have like three or four physiotherapies uh, everyone is specialized in a different um, in a different way what exercise techniques did you learn from the physiotherapist there are so many i don't know how to start the first thing that came to my mind is to work on um, soft discs you know especially with push-ups with one arm push-ups and with planks and everything. Uh, unstable it's training, pretty, yes. Yeah, it's pretty basic, but yeah, that made me understand that unstable training, as you said, it's super for your body, super healthy, super good, because it makes you understand really if you have a little bit of asymmetry, because uh, after the injury, I was able to do push-ups, but the shoulders were not in line. But as soon as I started training on soft discs, on BOSU, or on rings or whatever. Uh, also with the, with the help of an elastic band, maybe you can use them to assist yourself or to make it more difficult. Because elastic band also is not something stable. The elastic band, as, as you push your body or as you pull yourself, with the elastic band, uh, it can give you a little bit of an unbalanced motion. And if you use it on a smart way, you can make the exercise even harder with an elastic band. And you can understand uh, where do you need to work, how to activate yourself, how to, to do all the specific movement. The key thing there, everyone can relate to what you said. There's so many exercises that we can do for the rotator cuff scapula. If we do everything we've seen, our sessions are going to be so long and we're going to be very tired. What I've come to understand is it's about finding the ones that suit your body, your weakness. And people can do this by doing some research, experimenting, or probably the smartest approach is to just go see a professional. They can look at your body. Ooh, this side is lower. We need to work on serratus anterior or whatever the problem is. But in the end, what I what I found is that you must um, understand your body. You have to focus on your body, and as you said, you have to experience it. 
and then decide what to use and what to remove from your routine and depending on how the body responds. Did you build your physique from calisthenics alone? What I do say usually is that I do only calisthenics, but it's not the 100% truth. The 100% truth is that I do 99% of calisthenics, of my training as a calisthenics athlete. I had a few months of training with weights during the years. And what I can tell you specifically, uh, if I remember correctly, I started doing a little bit of weights after I broke my, my left forearm in the end of 2016. So as soon as I removed my plaster, I started with some free weights and some basic calisthenics. Uh, I think uh, in February 2017, I started. And I've done like five weeks of hard free weights uh, with dumbbells, especially uh, to recover because my left arm was uh, super weak and I have a lot of progress, especially aesthetically. And since then, people started to, to compliment me by saying that I use medicines, steroids or doping. And I'm not the type of guy, maybe I look super bulky in the photos, but you have to take in mind that I'm not tall i'm 165 centimeters i'm 5'5 five five. so maybe i appear bigger i have, i feel like i have a good body it's not like the body of a bodybuilding but is of a bodybuilder but is uh, is okay so i felt in love with free weights in 2017 but i had some calisthenics competitions to focus on so i removed the free weights and started doing skills for the competitions then after the competitions, I started again with free weights uh, in, uh, in the winter of 2018. So from uh, January to March 2018. Then other competitions of calisthenics, so I stopped it again. And I focused on the skills. Then I finished my competition season in September 2018. And from October 2018 to January 2019, I've done uh, free weights, usually three, four times per week, nothing more. Then I stopped again, focus on the skills for the YouTube videos, for the Instagram videos, because if I record a video while I'm doing free weights, people who won't like it. So I started to focus again on a little bit of skills on a little bit of calisthenics because this is what people likes to see from me at least and i started again with calisthenics then there was the whole covid situation from the end of 2019 and from 2020 to november december 2022 only calisthenics, only calisthenics. Wow. Now I'm adding again some free weights as is, it is. It was winter from, from uh, after the pack tier. Now it's like a couple of months that I'm training with free weights, especially for recovering the chest and putting a little bit of muscles. But it's not much. It's not like my focus on free weights. When I train with weights or when I will start training seriously with weights, I will say it openly because some people think that I'm a liar that I say that I train with calisthenics, but uh, in real life, I do train with weights. I feel like with weights, I will have a little bit uh, of more muscular mass, a little bit of better aesthetic, but this is the right um, ratio for me like doing a lot of calisthenics and then every once in a while put uh, two or three months of uh, free weights it's not only free weights it's free weights plus calisthenics yeah that's what i wanted to ask because many people want to mix calisthenics and weights how would you recommend to do this it depends by your final goal because free weights are great for strength or can be great for hypertrophy and or to stay healthy. So you can use the, the weights for three different goals, final goals. And we must be able to understand that it can be a positive thing if you use some weights and if you have, have the opportunity, you have to be able to pick the right exercises 
and and insert them in the right routine and find a good ratio because if you focus too much on free weights then you lose your calisthenics specific strength if you focus too much on calisthenics it's good it can be okay but then maybe you you are not really focusing on real strength or on real hypertrophy or on prevention so um, i i feel like it's a good uh, it's a good way of training because uh, calisthenics training is very functional but there are a few movements with the um, with the help of the weights like dumbbells barbells that that you can add to the calisthenics uh, uh as we were talking about the bench press the there aren't there aren't real um specific exercises to push a lot on the chest with the calisthenics because calisthenics you add the you you activate different type of muscles at the same times while on the bench press you can probably focus more on just on the chest and the tricep depending on how you set up yourself what exercises with weights best complement calisthenics if your final uh, objective is to improve your elements, your gymnastic elements, then there are a lot of exercises like flies, like bicep curls, like tricep extensions, um, also known as a skull crusher with dumbbells, you know, if you don't have uh, the cable machine. Um, there are um, the bent over rows. It can be good because when doing calisthenics, you can pull yourself on an horizontal way but usually you're doing australian pull-ups that it's pretty easy so the the bent over row with a barbell or dumbbells it can be okay even if you don't have much weight you can do a lot of volumes and do a superset with the australian pull-ups right after so you stress the muscle before and then you finish with some australian pull-ups so that you make them more more difficult, harder. And there are also other exercises like uh, the military press, the push press can be, can be useful. It depends by your final goal and uh, what you lack. Do you think it's best to separate calisthenics and weights in a workout, in a workout program phase or do them at the same time? What's the smartest way to do both? If you do it at the same time, it can be better for hypertrophy, I feel like. Especially when you work with a lot of volume, with low rest. And this is what I would suggest to, to the people to do. If you do it on different days, maybe you can set it up for a better strength result. So you can focus maybe one day more on the technique of calisthenics and then the next day you can focus more on the strength if you feel like this is your final goal if you want to be strong personally to be only strong for me is useless or at least doesn't give me much motivation at all because just doing one rep maximum of weight or whatever you want is not fun to me it's not like a set i like to to have fun for more time and this is why Sometimes I do combo combinations or supersets or circuits because I want to feel the movement. I want to feel my body. I just don't want to feel the strength for one rep repetition only. Maybe for others it can be, can be pretty fun because they feel super powerful. But uh, this, is not my, <laughs> this is not my way of doing it. And this is why probably we both focus on calisthenics because calisthenics gives you the opportunity of working for more time for during a set maybe you can lose a little bit of overall strength compared to maybe a power lifter but you can have more endurance more mobility and you can uh, maybe know better your own body you can you can understand how your body reply to a specific stress and that's the cool part about using calisthenics for hypertrophy, bodybuilding. As you said, we're doing pretty high volume, large number of reps. Each set takes a while, a lot of time under tension. Yeah. 
it's just fun. It's such a this fun is, way this to train. This is what I like. As you said, this is um, what uh, it didn't came to my mind. The, the time under tension, this is super important. And also to feel the difficulty during a set, uh, it makes you grow mentally. I'm not saying that um, um, specific strength training doesn't, because it does, but it's different. It's more, it's more fun for me and probably for you too. Yeah, it's more clenching your teeth, going more. You're at 40 reps. You go two more. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah, tired. Yeah. Rest to half a second. Bang. Two more reps versus, yeah, strength. It's just one. Let's risk it. Let's, let's risk of injury because you're working with, um, with an exercise that you can control for more repetitions. What are the most common mistakes that you see people make training calisthenics? Rush the process, I think. I think rush the process because they just don't want to enjoy the process. They don't want to enjoy the single training. They want only the specific goal. They want to reach a plunge or maybe to reach a muscle up or whatever. They just focus on the final goal. They don't focus on the fun side of the training because at the end of the day, yeah, training, it can be grueling. It can be hard. It can be not very enjoyable. But you need to have a passion about it. Because if you don't have a passion about that type of exercise, just change sport. Maybe find something funnier. Maybe go do go-karting or whatever, you know. But if you have a little bit of passion and you do this type of training, it's because it's supposed that you should like it. So if you like it, you have to like every training the good ones, the bad ones. And, and you must be able to stay in the moment. This is what I learned only a few years ago. And you have to stay on the moment on the single set. You can't focus your mind to other stuff. You can uh, do your muscle up and think about, oh, wait, tomorrow is going to be a bad day because it's going to happen something. You just have to focus on the repetition, on the single movement. Also because it can be dangerous. Even with a simple muscle up, you can just leap. Maybe you can lose your grip, or you can fall. It, it doesn't happen often, but it can happen. So you have to be on the moment. And if you are on the moment, uh, years goes by and you will find yourself uh, with new skills, with uh, a good progress. And this is what I feel like, at least for me. Because already 10 years has been passed and I don't know where, <laughs> when, how, is it, how it happened. Because I focus every day on the, on the day. Okay, today I know that I have to do this. And I focus on, on what I have to do at maximum effort. Then tomorrow we will see. So true with uh, concentrating, being mindful. You can do the proper technique. But more importantly, it's the intensity because if you don't concentrate, you will stop sooner than you should. A lot of people aren't trying hard at all. But if you keep concentrating, okay, it's it's starting to hurt. I can do a few more. You just stay with it. You stay present. Yeah. And this helps. As you said, a few more. You have to talk to yourself, especially when you are in your deep comfort zone, when you are not comfort, when you are pushing out and near the limit. Oh, oh, oh obviously always in a safer way, but you have to be able to, to push, to finish the set strong, every set as your last set with a little bit of buffer <laughs> for the next set. What is your approach to nutrition for calisthenics? This is a pretty fun one because people don't believe me. Um, I don't count calories and I'm not on a diet at the moment. I used to a few years ago, like 2018, 2019 but not anymore because it was pretty stressful for my mind and I enjoy, I enjoy to eat a lot of pasta. So what I, what I, what I found... Of course, you're Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I found useful is that um, I can focus on my macronutrients. Let's say that I have between 50 or 60% of carbs during the day and then on the rest only proteins and fats 
once you have found your your routine with your good ratio of macronutrients stick with it especially if you are able to to perform because at the moment i feel like um, i'm able to perform pretty good and i have a pretty good aesthetic uh, with my type of diet with my type of eating style so what i do is eating a lot of carbs that i even uh, that i enjoy so a lot of pasta i eat pasta every day every lunch i eat um, uh, a lot of fruit at lunch and sometimes dinner too and when i need to add some proteins or uh, i do eat a little bit of meat i don't really like to eat meat and fish because I don't really like the taste but I do eat just for um, because I need it. So every once in a while I I do eat meat but I usually help myself with a whey protein uh, scoop, you know, with a shake. But during the weekend, Friday Friday or Saturday, I I usually eat one or two um, two sweets, like maybe an ice cream or maybe uh something similar we have cannoli <laughs> in italy that's a very sensible approach to nutrition and i would say that it works because it suits your body but its underlying success is because you train hard you push yourself you're putting that stimulus on your muscles so you've got to have the building blocks of decent nutrition but how that's done can vary. And we speak to so many different athletes and experts. Everyone eats differently and things work for different people. But what I want people to understand is that approach for you is working, that kind of flexible approach because you train so hard. Yeah, probably because um, I feel like training is really important. People don't really push their themselves as you said, it's flexible and I'm able to stay consistent. I have the energy because carbohydrates are important for the energy. So I can always train even if I'm a little bit sorry or if I'm tired. Good ratio between um, stay consistent with healthy food and enjoying it with good results. The secret to success if you want to be strong like Andre is pasta. Yeah, of course. Uh, also rice. I, I love rice. Uh, I'm not like the the bodybuilders who always uh, eat rice and chicken because as I said I don't really like meat. Yeah. But I like rice and pasta and oh, obviously in the weekends uh pizza uh, is a must. <laughs> is a must. You're someone who has a very strong mindset. We can all tell that from hearing you speak and watching you over the years. How do we grow that within ourselves? Do you have any advice for that? Since I'm, I've stopped competing, I've learned so much about my mind and about what it is, the ego especially. And this is very important. Um, it made me understand that everything in life is an opinion. Um, we, we, li we live like our own type of life or universe, you know, because... Maybe we have similar experience, but anyone uh, have a different feedback in their mind or a different way or a different emotion to it. Because maybe for me, uh, doing 50,000 views is not okay for my job, but maybe for someone else who has 100 followers, 50,000 views are super good. This is the first thing that came to my mind. But this is a very good example because... I make a priority, maybe the views, because I need to make a, a little bit of money to keep going, to make a living with it. And when maybe there aren't many views, for me, it's uh, like a bad thing. But for others, the same views would be super good, would be a super great achievement. And this is applied to everything in life. So we have a, our different type of uh, way of seeing stuff and how to feel different type of experiences. This helped me a lot. Also reading a lot of books. Uh, I read a lot of books about uh, spirituality, about philosophy. So it, it's helping me a lot. Because, you know, a lot of people just leave the day like robots. But we really must understand 
ourselves and then maybe we can understand a little bit about the life we lead. Well said, Andre. Where can people find out more about your work if they want to follow you, if they're not already? Um, they can find me on Instagram at laros underscore sw. This is probably the most important social for me because uh, I can stay active at least by stories, by by posting stories. On YouTube, of course, at Andrea Lorosa Official. We appreciate you, brother. Thanks for what you've done for the calisthenics culture. Hoping your rehab goes well, you come back bigger and stronger. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Dan. And I wish you the best. Keep going with your work, with your amazing work. Will do, man. Very good. Very good chat. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Visit fitnessfaqs.com to master calisthenics and become a bodyweight pro.